Well, hello everybody and welcome to Workshop Studios. Today, we're going to work on this deck. Uh, I'll put a, a link here, somewhere up there, um, to the previous video where I built this deck. <clears throat> but it's time to refinish it and clean it up. This is pine pollen. We have that in our area. And it sticks to everything. So the first thing I need to do before we put another coat of finish on this, which will make it look really nice, is to give it a good scrub. And the way I do that is just with some of the stuff you buy in the big box stores, the house wash, and a mop. Pretty straightforward. I'll get started with that. All right, we finally have a good day for doing the deck. And uh, what we're looking for is a fairly dry day that will dry all the dew off of the deck. Uh, and but not too hot that it's going to make the the uh, stain uh, sticky almost immediately when it hits the hot deck. So what we're going to do is move all this stuff off uh, and clear out the deck. Then we'll blow it off and get started. Okay, there it is, all cleared off, blown off, and supplies are ready. So I've got the stain there and there, and the stain I'm using, as you can see here, it's called Cabot Gold Mahogany, mid, mid, Moonlit Mahogany, there we go. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and use that kind of a brush, so you can see it, I'm going to use a 3 inch brush. And what I do is I use the paint tray has a catch basin, not this is going to be the container for the stain. So that'll go inside the tray. <clears throat> I won't use the the, um, the roller on this one because this, this material just doesn't seem to do well with a roller. So we'll just try and paint it on. Um, and it looks pretty good. I don't need to do any sanding, I don't think, this time. So let's get started. All right, so there's the step done, and you can see it does a really nice job of kind of restoring the, the rich depth, depth of the color. So we're just going to continue on. Uh, just a couple of real quick tricks is that you want to brush with the grain as much as possible because you will see brush strokes in this sometimes, not always. Um, and other than that, it, it does dry, well, it gets tacky very quickly, so you want to work a smallish space and get it right and then move on because you won't be able to come back to it. It's one of those things where you've got to plan out your, your uh, <laughs> painting. So my thought is I'll come down like this way and then continue down uh, rather than come across like this because I want to brush with the grain. It's easier that way, so let's do that. Okay, that's, I'll call it the first coat, and it may be the final coat, but we'll see how it dries. It really soaked it up this time. Oops. There's a good shot there. So, it, uh, it's a great product. Just need to <laughs> freshen it up every once in a while. I probably went too long on this one. But we'll wait till it dries and take another shot. Alright, so this is couple hours later and it's not sticky to the touch up here don't want to walk on it yet I'm gonna give it at least a day so I'll leave the furniture off for a while too but it looks good I don't know that it needs a second coat pretty pretty amazing product all right 
All right, so with the deck painted, next we're going to work on these rails and balusters and painting this up here. And to do that, we have to remove them. So um, I lowered this down and they pull right off really pretty easily. And so here's one where I've taken the rail all the way off. They just have these, these that I mounted when I first made the deck. Uh, and so I'll be able to paint these separately and get all these balusters out of here. And here's, here's ones that I've already cleaned up and painted. They don't look super different. I used a black satin on these. I may go with a gloss, but I haven't quite figured that out. So anyhow, I'll show you that real quick. Before I do that, let me just give you a close-up. That green on there is just mold that grows on them, or whatever you want to call it. And sometimes it gets weathered like this, where in fact it's, the paint is gone on it. But a lot of these, the paint is really pretty dusty on it. So let me show you what I do about that. I just It's pretty simple. Bucket of soapy water, a bit of scotch bright, and then I scrub these off, put them in some fresh water, rinse them off. All right, so I laid out the balusters like this now, rather than upright. I just was not getting very much paint on them, so this way I can get the paint really goes on efficiently. So you can see what I'm doing here. I don't even have to be very fancy about how I spray them. And then what I do is just roll them over once I get the, uh, the spraying done. I'll finish this up and show you what it looks like. There we go. That's nicely improved. I chose to go with a gloss black. Um, it's just, uh, it, it's got a little cleaner look to it, I think, than the, uh, the flat black does. All right, so, all right, so here's the deck with uh, all the balusters taken out, as you can see. Come around here, you can see this too. Kind of a mess out here. So, and I've started to paint those lower rails on the, the uh, holding the balusters up. So uh, we'll keep going on this, just kind of keep taking things off, painting them, and then putting them back on once they get painted. There's another angle showing all the balusters out. And the poor sunscreen has to be taken down so it looks kind of droopy. Anyhow, so continuing to paint them, you can see some of them have brought back over here and uh, paint these rails. So, we'll get it. Well, this is really mass production now. <laughs> Put a lot of balusters on there. This is an old wire cart. But it was perfect. They fit on there and we'll spray paint them right on the cart. The way I think I already mentioned, but this is a great, a very efficient way to use the paint. Very little of it goes as overspray flies off. Actually most of it goes right on the metal and it turns out really good. So if you ever have to do this I would suggest something like this. All right I thought I'd share a little detail with you. This is the attachment that I came up with for putting these bottom rails on. This is a normal connector you'd find at Home Depot or Lowe's that is for well just call it structural connections. So you'd look in the I don't know the place where they have parts to build decks and houses and stuff like that and you'd find these things there. I went ahead and modified them slightly because I drilled holes big enough for these screws to go in. And the reason I did it this way is that it allows me to put the, the rail in from the bottom and I'll show you that in a minute. And then I can kind of prop the balusters into it by hooking them on the top there too. Uh, and then kind of slowly lifted in. So let me show you what that looks like.
is here at the top this one I need to tighten up a little more but here at the top I ended up putting um, something a little different up here down at the bottom you can see I've used what are I would consider store-bought connectors for these balusters but up top I put in a kind of a bolt with a, a nut or a, a screw through it and then I put electrical tape around it to make a flexible end on this if you can see what I'm doing there and that allows me to push the balusters around just a little bit but it does hold them in place so that they'll they'll um, uh, they won't fall out of there while I'm trying to put them all into place so I hope that makes sense too <laughs> uh, but that's how I, I ended up I just couldn't figure out how to do this and get all those balusters into place without some other crazy um, system all right so just in case it was confusing this upper one is a nut that's this part here with a drywall screw or a deck screw through it uh, and then what I did was I put a piece of electrical tape that's what this is just electrical tape over the top of it I don't know if I can do this one-handed but so it just slides up there oops <laughs> Gotta look at it. okay so something like that so that what I end up with is a flexible part to the bottom where the the um, baluster will push on but this will hold it into place so that it goes up straight hope that makes sense hey pokey mm -hmm. let's have some fun with mr. Bill today uh, yay, yay. okay here we go hey mr. Bill uh, what let's go down this fun slide oh that looks kind of dangerous I don't think so no oh you'll be just fine have a look okay here we go no! Okay, now it's time to do the molding along here, here, along there, and back there. I think that'll neaten it up. Plus, I need to put one last little piece right down in here for flooring that the molding will sit on top of. So, we're going to start to cut those and get the molding shaped. Just uh, FYI, the cutting. 10 and 12 foot boards into smaller strips can be tricky because they're so long but luckily I have my bench here that's built to the height same height as the table saw and then I have a little roller out there that catch it as I cut it so hopefully that'll take care of um, of this so this piece comes all the way back here so we'll get that started okay time to shape the uh, uh, molding and I've decided to go with a dado blade that's what that is there in the table saw um, I could do it with a, with a router Just trying to get this piece over here but that's the shape if you can see it there I think that'll be real nice so I'll go ahead and cut all those and be ready to install 
All right, so there's the little pieces, little finished pieces, I should say, put in there. And then the molding will sit on top of those. So that part's done. The molding is being stained and drying. But our next project is over here. It's an old dryer vent that was installed when the house was first built, and this was in the wrong place. So we have a dryer vent around the corner, and we don't need this one anymore. So I need to get it out of there and cut it out and uh, put a little bit of cement in there, kind of make it look like it's supposed to, and then paint it, and we can put the molding on. I'll show you what that looks like. So I've never done this before, so this will be a first for me. But um, what this is, is a, it's nothing much. It's just a piece of thin aluminum, so there's not too much to it. Um, but it is embedded in the concrete, or stucco if you might. So what I want to do is cut it out as close to that as I can. I'll change, do whatever I can in the inside, put a little wire mesh in there, and then put the, the cement in. To cut it out, I'm going to use a right angle with a metal cutting blade on it. All right, so there we go, and you can see there's <laughs> there's a hole there, and what we didn't like is the fact that this was a perfect spot for um, critters to crawl in there and make homes, which I don't think they have right now. So we need to uh, plug that up. <clears throat> Anyhow, I will go ahead and neaten up the edges a little bit, and then I'll get some concrete out here. All right, so the wire mesh acts like kind of reinforcement for the concrete, so it's not just all on its own. That's all that really is doing. And the tape is just to sort of keep it from falling through the hole and filling up the, the thing behind it there. So I think we're ready to put the, the, uh, the thin set on there. Okay, so one thing you may not be able to see, but the thin set is very sticky and it's great, but it's actually meant to go flat and, and level out. So it's kind of drooping down slowly. So I'll, <clears throat> I'll continue to kind of pull it up as it, as it hardens and that'll keep it from making a big old drooly mess down here at the bottom. Well, I had to let the thin set set for a while so that it was stiff enough so it didn't keep drooping down, but it's getting better. I think we'll uh, smash it down. You can see the pattern on this is that it's kind of dragged along. So once it sets up a little bit more, we'll do a little more um, work to get it to look the same and then call her quits. All right, here it is the next day. It's got a few cracks in it, but maybe that'll fill in with the, with the uh, paint. So let's put some paint on there and see how that looks. All right, so it's time to hook the molding down. You can see it here. What I'm going to do is drill through first with this and countersink slightly. And I'm going to go down from the top and we'll use two and a half inch uh, deck screws. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, the other thing is I'm going to try to, I'm not going to put very many screws in this. Each board I'll go with two screws unless it's super long and then I'll, I'll try three just don't need that many I just need to kind of hold it in place and the other thing is I, I went with these as opposed to stapling it in I could use my my staple gun to do that and staple them down into the deck but I do like the opportunity to be able to pull these up if need be and, and restain them over time if we need to so that this gives a little more flexibility for that well I ended up going this way rather than down because there's there's a lot of places where there is no board back there to, to catch, and so this is much better. And it also pulls it against the wall better. I think you have better all over our control, so I'm going to go this way. There we go. 
So, I think that'll turn out really nice. Okay, there they are all hooked down. You can see a couple of the spots there. And looking good all the way around. So, I'll do a little touching up on a couple of spots that uh, look like they need stain. But other than that, we're, I think we're done with the molding. Well, here we go. This is it. All finished. We've had a nice thunderstorm today. Left the deck with a little bit of water on it. But you can see that it's uh, beaded up nicely now. So I'll just give you a quick tour Oops, without falling down. <laughs> so there's the steps. We've redone the sundial as well. And here it is looking back this way. So we're all finished. Molding is in place. Everything's back in where it should be. So we turned out great. Very pleased with it. Thanks for watching. And please like and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next video. Bye.